does inequality matter? Thank you. Thank you very much. I, first of all, can I say what a pleasure it is to be here to be speaking at this uh, first event of Bright Blue, as uh, Polly referred to. And I think it's perhaps a, an interesting sign of the sort of organisation this is and the way the party has moved on, that both your key speakers tonight are female, which is what people think, um, and, uh, and that the first speaker for Bright Blue was Polly Toynbee. <laughs> and it has to be said, that I think if you had said, even maybe five, six, certainly ten years ago, that at an event launching an organisation involved with the Conservative Party, looking at ideas within the Conservative Party, the first speaker was going to be Polly, people probably wouldn't have believed that that would take place. <laughs> so I think that's some sort of, uh, some sort of sign. Um, what I wanted to do is actually talk about, um, I mean, Polly has talked about inequality and why, uh, how those countries where they are more equal tend, I mean the evidence tends to be they, uh, into the better economies and some of those issues. But I wanted actually to take the next stage of the question, if you like, um, because I think there is a general uh, recognition that inequality does matter. Uh, but the, and inequality has been getting worse. Uh, as a Conservative Party, we've always been a party that has believed in, yes, that equality of opportunity, which I'm going to come on to, and at social, and crucially, at social mobility. Uh, but, and what we've seen over recent years is that on all the measures that you look at, the measures that you most usually uh, looked at in relation to inequality um, and social <coughs> mobility, they have been getting worse. And the question then, it seems to me, is not just well, does this matter? But what do you do about it? And I think that's the most important thing, in a sense, because it's all very well sitting and saying, well, we don't think the country should be so unequal, we think we should have better social mobility and so forth. You've actually got to do, achieve, do something that is going to help to change that trend in inequality and do something that is going to actually make a difference. And so I just wanted to talk about, um, first of all, that concept of, of what inequality is and how you measure it, and then how you approach it. Because I think what you believe inequality to be about um, is crucial in looking at how you're going to deal with it. And this is why I think the current government has made some errors in, in uh, a more crucial error in the way that they have approached this issue. And it is because they have looked at inequality really very much as being about income. It's a, it's a financial inequality that has been driving everything. Which is why, for example, in the child poverty bill that is going through the House at the moment, um, the measures, the targets that are being set for future governments in relation to child poverty are all about income. They're all financial targets. Uh, and the government's main response, and their main response, because there are other aspects like short start, although we'll come in a minute about what that has actually been achieving, but the main response of the government to the issue of inequality has been, um, through the tax credit system, has been about raising people's income. And the danger with this, the problem with this, is that it doesn't address the whole issue about inequality. And you can't, it would be a wonderful world where passing a bill about child poverty would eradicate child poverty. But of course it won't. Having the targets for government won't in themselves eradicate <coughs> child poverty. It's about what you actually do and how you perceive uh, the causes of poverty and the causes of inequality that matter. And I want to focus on two aspects of, of what we would do as a, as a party in relation to this particular issue and two of the issues that I think are important behind this. Um, but if I just come back uh, very briefly to this issue of, of income being not the only thing. As my colleague Andrew Salou said, uh, he spoke at a party conference in our welfare session about child poverty, and he made the point that if you were to knock on the door of a family who had, through perhaps receipt of tax credits, been lifted from 59% of medium income up to 61% uh, of medium income, i.e. above the point at which they were considered to be in poverty, um, if you knocked on that door, and, uh, and talk to them about it, I doubt very much if they would say, yippee, we're suddenly out in poverty. Um, there will be many other issues that they will be grappling with, that they'll be dealing with, and that, that small step wouldn't in itself be something that was going to take them out of poverty. And yet, so much of the focus is on just moving people that little bit of a step 
um, in financial terms uh, in order to meet targets, which I think is not the right approach to take. I think what we need to be looking is at the causes of poverty, and the causes of inequality, and doing something about those. And the two that I want to talk about are education, because I think education is a very important aspect of this. And ensuring that children have access to good quality education, regardless of their background, must be a key aim for us, and I think a key aim for any government. Because I believe that education is an important tool. It is an important part of the, uh, of the picture in terms of helping people to lift, themself, lift themselves out of poverty and helping them to be able to aspire to and achieve the sort of, uh, uh, of life, the sort of uh, work, the sort of careers, the sort of environment in which they are going to be uh, more equal and in which we're going to be able to see that social mobility improving. And the second element is work and worklessness. And I strongly believe that work is the best route out of poverty, but it has much more to it as well, because it's not just about an income stream, it's about uh, socialisation, it's about the impact it has on family, children in a workless household are more likely to do less well at school, so that avenue of, uh, of uh, being taken out of poverty, of being taken out of that uh, less equal environment uh, is less open to the child in the workless household. So work, I think, is absolutely a crucial part of this picture as well. And that's why welfare reform, uh, a new approach to helping people get into the workplace is going to be so important. And a new approach which, which helps not just those who are becoming unemployed now, but actually helps those who've been long-term unemployed, those people who have been dependent on benefits. And sadly, there is, uh, in some communities within this country, there is a culture of welfare dependency. Um, if you have been brought up in a family where people have not had jobs, in a street where the majority of people have not had jobs, and in a neighborhood where the majority of people have not had jobs and are dependent on, on uh, benefits, then for you to break that cycle is incredibly difficult because all the pressures around you are about worklessness, are about dependency on, on benefit. So what we do in, in radically reforming our approach to welfare, I think is absolutely an important part of this picture. I pay tribute to the uh, work that's been done by the Centre for Social Justice because some of the issues I'm going to talk, touch on are the sort of things that they have been talking about. Um, looking at the issues around addiction, around family breakdown, all of these other aspects that become a part of the picture. And it is difficult to pin on any one thing. I know because I, I, as it happens, I had a meeting with my child poverty group today and we were talking about the impact of families on child poverty. And we've looked at addiction, we've looked at housing. Um, as it happens, next time I'm going to be talking about inequality and how we measure inequality and looking at these, some of these issues. And when you talk about these issues, they do all interrelate. You can't simply press one button and suddenly everything is, uh, is better. It is uh, about a complicated picture for many people of issues which we need to be addressing. So you can't just focus on one or two items in, in uh, aspects in order to be able to resolve these problems. But I do believe that crucially within that mix, the two that I've focused on of worklessness, um, taking people out of a dependency on, on uh, benefits and education are important. And I understand what, uh, you know, where Polly is coming from and what she was uh, saying about the, uh, uh, you know, do you move people from the bottom to the middle or do you, do you squeeze from the top uh, and to the bottom? But actually what we have to think about is what we can do in a practical way that is going to make a real difference to people's lives. What can we do that is going to improve social mobility and reduce that inequality that we see at the moment and start to turn the uh, tide around? Uh, and I believe that that is very important that this is an issue that will be addressed by a Conservative government should we be elected at the next election. And I believe that the two items that I've identified are absolutely a crucial part of that picture in terms of actually doing something that is going to make a real difference to people. Thanks very much, Teresa.